This week in H10 EMA, we've been looking at magnetic circuits and how we can move things using electricity and magnetism. This is electromechanics, and this is the boundary of electrical engineering and mechanical engineering. In the lecture, we looked at how we can use the magnetic field that's induced around a current carrying wire, which we can interact with an external magnetic field, which will then produce a jumping motion. And then we used Lear's slap rule to find out the direction of this. We've also started to look at how we can return it the other way around. And if we move a wire between an external magnetic field, that will then induce a current or a voltage. This is the basis of how we can generate electricity. And once again, the interaction between the mechanical world and the electrical world. In these videos, we'll be going over these topics in a little bit more detail, so you can go through the sections that you need to recap to improve your own understanding. In the class, we also looked at magnetic circuits. If you understand electrical circuits, you can use these simple rules such as Ohm's law to then apply this understanding to magnetic circuits. The main difference in a magnetic circuit is that we have the magnetomotive force, the MMF, which is caused due to the current flowing through coils of wire wrapped around a magnetic material, such as iron. This iron ring that we're using as our circuit has what's called a reluctance. The reluctance of the ring is calculated using the physical dimensions, so you need to know these, and these will be in the question if you're asked to answer one of these. The final term we have in our magnetic circuit is the magnetic flux. This can be thought of in terms of a magnetic current which will flow around that toroid. The main thing to remember with magnetic flux is that it's measured in Weber's and it's not the same as Tesla, which is magnetic flux density. We're going to be using these terms more for the rest of the module and you'll get more comfortable with them the more you use them. There's no ROGO this week. The final ROGO of the module will go live after the class on Wednesday. In this video, we're going to talk about the magnetic field passing through a current carrying wire. So here's my length of wire, and you can imagine this is attached to something so we can put a current through it. And this is going to generate a magnetic field around it because we've got this thing called the electromagnetic spectrum, and the clue is that you can't have the electric bit without the magnetic bit too. So what you want to do is work out which direction the current is going. And in my, ex my example, I'm going to say the current is going upwards to begin with. And what you'll do is take your right hand and put your thumb in the direction of the current, so the current's going up. Then what you do is you close your fingers around the wire, and this will indicate the direction of the magnetic field which is being generated by this wire. And these field lines are going to be concentric and in the direction that my fingers are turning. So this time the current is going to go in the opposite direction, so it's going to go downwards. Again, using my right hand, I'm going to put my thumb in the direction of the current, and you can see that my fingers are going to curl in the direction of the magnetic field lines. And we can see that this is now in the opposite direction than it was when the current was going upwards. And that is how you find the magnetic field around a current carrying wire. If we take our current carrying wire, which is generating its own magnetic field, and place it in an external magnetic field, which is one we apply ourselves, these two magnetic fields will interact and our wire will experience a force causing it to move. So here's my current carrying wire, and it generates its own magnetic field and concentric rings around it, kind of like a tree trunk shape. We're going to then add this to an external magnetic field. And this could be just two poles of a magnet, which we then look at the force between. So a quick word on how we represent 3D fields in two dimensions. So this, um, this magnetic field is represented by a series of crosses. And this means that the field is going into the screen. If we could see into the screen and look at this sideways, we'd see the arrow going along. If we saw a dot, this would mean that the field was coming out of the screen towards us. So imagine if you had an arrow. If it was going away from you, you'd see the feathers looking like a cross. And if it was coming towards you, you'd see the pointy bit looking like a dot, or at least until you got out of the way. So what we're going to do is combine these two magnetic fields together. And this acts like superposition. So we'll have the fields reinforcing in some places and cancelling out in others. This gives us an overall field effect when we add them together, which means our wire experiences a force. 
shown by the green arrow, so it's actually going to move. If we set up our system so that the length of the wire runs at right angles to the magnetic field, we can find the force using the equation F is equal to BIL, or BIL if you want a nice way to remember it. So let's look at this and see what each term actually means. Well, first of all, here's our wire. F is the force in Newton, so as we saw, that was the direction the wire was going to move in, represented by the green arrow. B is the magnetic field strength of the applied field in Tesla, or T. Remember that the cross indicates the field travelling away, and a dot would indicate it coming towards you. Then we have I. This is the current passing through our wire in amps. Then we've got L. L is the length of wire which passes through the magnetic field in metres. It's worth remembering it's not the total length of the wire, but just the length of the wire that crosses over that magnetic field. The direction of the force, magnetic field and current are orthogonal. This means that they're all at right angles to each other for this equation to apply. So if we have our wire and our current I is in the Y direction, the magnetic field B is in the Z direction, so it's going into the screen, then the force the wire will experience F is in the X direction. So these are all at 90 degrees to each other. This is what our orthogonal term means. We can adapt the right hand rule from before. So the right hand rule was used to find the direction of the magnetic field around a current carrying wire. So what I want you to do is to put your thumb pointing in the direction of the current. Then put your fingers in the direction of the applied magnetic field. So this time because the field is going into the screen, your fingers should be pointing towards the screen. This means your palm is pointing in the direction of the force. So if you just moved your palm in the direction it's already facing, it will give you that direction of the force. And I like to call this Lear's slap rule because it really helps me remember it. What Faraday discovered is that if you take a wire, such as this one, and you move it in a magnetic field, a voltage will be generated or induced. And this is electromagnetic induction, and that's why we use this term induced. So the technical term for this is that we're cutting the flux. And flux is essentially saying it's a magnetic field. So the magnetic field is going to go from north to south. And if we make our wire cut it at kind of 90 degrees, or so it's orthogonal, we will induce that voltage. And we can then connect these two ends of the wire to the rest of the circuit, and we'll have basically power being generated. So we're converting from mechanical energy, from moving something, into electrical energy. The important thing also to talk about Faraday's law is it only works if you cut the flux. If you move the wire in this direction, you're not cutting that magnetic field because you're moving in the same direction of it, and this will mean that no voltage is induced. You can go diagonally and you will cut some flux, and you will get some voltage, but it's not as efficient as this direct orthogonal cutting. And that's how Faraday's law works.